Good morning, I'm Ashish Kalra. I run a family office in India. I have uh, bachelor's degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin, master's in operations research from Cornell, master's in industrial engineering from Cornell, an MBA from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business, all I believe ranked number one in their respective fields. Uh, subsequently, I worked on the corporate side for around 21 years with names like um, A.T. Carney, UBS, Citigroup, BNP, Paribas. What I really want to get into today is uh, a solution for COVID-19 using a framework called like what I call evolution and ramifications of animal viruses. Now, from this current chart, what I believe is that this decay of COVID-19 will resemble this chart, which you know, essentially will go from B to C. And then A to B is due to a Pfizer or an AstraZeneca or a Moderna vaccine. I will explain why there's a certain solution which will take it from B to C. So this is basically a summary. I'll break it up into uh, eight modules. Now, basically, um, uh, more than 25 years ago, I started studying uh, animal viruses at the University of Texas at Austin, uh, basically going into uh, the mad cow disease, uh, which is the kretzofeld jacob disease, uh, which is caused because of human consumption of cattle. And then I went into uh, the H5N1 virus, uh, which is caused because of uh, human consumption of chicken, and also led uh, to the 1918 pandemic. It was one of the reasons. Now here, I want to talk about the Nipah virus, uh, which happened in 1998-99 in Malaysia. Uh, basically, pigs were being reared in a community uh, where bats uh, used to live. And essentially, uh, you've had a virus that has uh, gone from bats to pigs and then to humans. And it was basically a deadly disease uh, that killed a number of people. Uh, the disease spread to Singapore. Uh, they were able to isolate it uh, pretty effectively. The other disease from pigs, uh, among others, is the swine flu influenza. Um, and um, this has happened uh, repeatedly. And then there's a very interesting article by John Cohen in Science uh, in uh, on July 29, 2020, where he talks about Basically, uh, there's a swine flu strain with human pandemic potential that has been found in China. Now, the swine flu pandemic, uh, which is basically uh, the 2009 pandemic, which I'll go into later, it caused around 300 uh, to 400,000 uh, diseases. Now, interestingly, I talked about the mad cow disease or the Kretzerfeld Jacobs disease, which is caused because of uh, consumption of diseased. Uh, cattle meat. Now, there's a very interesting study by my alma mater, uh, the Chicago Booth School of Business and Columbia University, um, and they basically talked about the U.S. meatpacking plants contributing up to 8% of current U.S. 19 uh, COVID cases. Um, they talk about uh, these plants being transmission or acceleration vectors uh, for uh, the disease. Now, I've talked about cattle, I've talked about chicken, I've talked about pigs. An important part of this whole ecosystem is bats, and they cause um, you know, a number of viruses, including the Marburg virus in 1994, the Hendra virus in Brisbane, Australia, the Ebola virus in 2013, which was caused in West Africa uh, due to consumption of bats. And then I've talked about the Nipah virus, I'll go into the SARS virus, which happened in 2003, 2004 in China, and that was because of the consumption of bat-infected chivets. So basically, I've talked about this sort of animal matrix, uh, uh, you know, diseases or viruses caused uh, by eating chicken, pigs, bats, chivets, uh, pangolin, uh, which is the cause of the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic, it was because of consumption of bat-infected pangolin. So basically, I talk about an evolution of animal viruses, uh, which is basically, um, uh, you know, it's going from uh, chicken, H1N, F1, cattle, mad cow disease, pig, swine, flu, and then also there's marine animals. If you kill whales, 
it causes global warming because of melting of the snow caps. And then um, uh, dolphins have a very high mercury content, which is bad for human beings, and hence they really can't be eaten. But even consumption of sharks uh, causes damage to the oceanic subsystems because they eat certain predators, uh, which prevent uh, certain uh, um, animals that would otherwise multiply exponentially. And then in the last, uh, the lower right-hand corner, I talk about uh, basically uh, the chivets to SARS virus, pigs to the swine flu pandemic, camels to the MERS virus, and then the uh, current corona uh, pandemic. So basically, this is the same uh, chart. I basically uh, talked about uh, bats causing uh, all these viruses. And this is research from uh, Reina Plorite at MSU, Melvin Seneca's, uh, Ari Ramoyne at UCLA, uh, Peter Desak, um, uh, Stephen Luby at, uh, at Columbia. Now, basically, uh, if you look at what are the causes of these human pandemics, uh, basically, the, 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 the coronavirus, or the COVID-19 pandemic, was caused because of human consumption of pangolin uh, in Wuhan, and then, um, you know, it spread, um, basically, uh, because, uh, unlike the MERS virus, uh, which happened in Saudi Arabia in 2012-2014, uh, this virus, um, the MERS virus was localized, Corona, the corona pandemic, it spread because of human mouth-to-mouth -mouth transmission. There were regular six or seven flights from Wuhan to Europe, six or seven regular flights daily to the US, and six or seven daily flights to Iran. The virus spreads human mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, which is the most efficient way for the virus to spread. It's, it's going to not spread in a linear fashion, uh, but in an exponential fashion. And then I've talked about the, uh, you know, this uh, swine flu strain in, uh, in China, and then human consumption um, of um, the meatpacking plants. And then um, I think I just want to spend a minute on the SARS virus in 2003-2004. Uh, it was caused due to human consumption of chivets. Uh, the source is uh, the CDC, uh, Robert Roos, an excellent article in uh, The Who uh, sees the greater role of the Chivet role in uh, the SARS virus. And then they had uh, genetic proof uh, from someone in Guangdong um, to establish that human consumption of Chivets caused the SARS virus. Now, uh, the Chinese government ordered 14,000 Chivets uh, to be killed in February 2004. And then basically I talk about the intensity of the viruses is increasing. So if you go from SARS in 2003-2004, uh, the swine flu pandemic killed around uh, 300,000 human beings. Uh, MERS, which is because of camels, uh, and this was localized. I mean, it spread to around 31 countries in the Middle East, uh, but it was not as bad as the uh, coronavirus. Now, if you look at the MERS virus, it was caused due to proximity uh, to camels and human consumption of camels in the Middle East uh, in various parts, in Jordan, in Libya, uh, basically originated in Saudi Arabia. And if you look at a lot of the CDC research, um, it was caused because of human consumption of camels. And basically what I try to argue is that animals have natural inbuilt defense mechanisms to protect themselves from human consumption. So basically I've talked about these mega viruses, uh, basically SARS, uh, to MERS, to Corona, basically caused because of consumption of the different animals, uh, shivets to camels, uh, to pangolin, and then there's a global pandemic of 2020, um, and then the MERS virus, as I mentioned, was localized, and therefore it did not spread uh, like uh, the coronavirus. So the, if, I, if I look at, you know, like 10 uh, virus origins in the last um, uh, 70 years, uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that um, there's a lot of viruses originating in China. The Asian flu pandemic because of human consumption of ducks, avian influenza in 2007 because of consumption of chicken, the SARS virus 2003 because of consumption of chivets, and the coronavirus because of the consumption of bat-infected pangolin. Now basically, uh, I want to talk about an ecosystem theory, uh, which is basically 
if you look at uh, cobras, now when cobras, um, when human beings sort of come close to a cobra, uh, you know, they, they move their hoods up. And then if they feel they're being attacked, if you move your hand or you get closer, they attack you with a venom, which is deadly for the cardiac system and human beings die. Now with a mongoose, a mongoose has acetylcholine receptor, which prevents it from uh, cobra venom. And essentially when it attacks the, uh, the cobra, uh, it doesn't get killed, right? And that is a defense, defense mechanism possessed by the mongoose. And essentially what, I, what, what I'm arguing is that basically the animals have a different ecosystem. And this is a self-contained ecosystem. A mongoose is killed by jackals and hawks uh, and then raccoons. That's killed by foxes and uh, coyotes and bobcats. That's killed by bears. That's by grizzly bears and then um, by tigers. But it's a, it's a closed system. It's a different uh, ecosystem that cannot be encroached uh, by man. So this is the same uh, thing. And one of the things I um, talk about is if you look at rats multiplying from 2 to 1, 1,250 at the end of the year, that's also by design. It's a design of animals. That's because various animal species, um, the different kinds of snakes, hissing cobras, king cobras, green cobras, um, pythons, uh, and various kinds of birds, owls and falcons and hawks, that feed on these rats. And to sustain that ecosystem, rats multiply the same way. So my argument is basically that human beings uh, are a different ecosystem. They can't feed, they can't kill and feed animals. And then secondly, cannibals uh, also cannot kill and feed human beings. That's ecosystem C cannot kill ecosystem B, cannibals get brain disease. So these are different ecosystems and human beings cannot encroach um, on animals. So basically what I'm arguing is that the animal food chain has to be disrupted permanently. And for that to happen, uh, basically, uh, you know, we'll start with wild animals and then the quasi wild animals and domesticated animals. And then the animals that I have in boxes have led to large viruses or pandemics. So for example, the wild animals, flying foxes, bears, chivets, pangolin, wild bear, and then finally, uh, bats, camels, uh, pigeons, and so on. You can't kill and eat them. And lastly, cattle, uh, chicken, uh, pigs. And module number five, what I argue is that the design of man is vegetarian. So if you actually look at man, basically his teeth, he doesn't have canine teeth to tear flesh. Uh, the tongue, they have weak tongues. Uh, uh, carnivores have weak tongues, unlike uh, herbivores and man. And then if you look at water, uh, carnivores gulp water, man uses his uh, tongue and cheeks uh, for drinking water. Uh, the kidneys in carnivores are much larger uh, to flush out poisonous meat. Uh, man and herbivores have smaller kidneys. And then uh, intestines, carnivores have much smaller intestines compared to man and herbivores. So the net net is that the design of man is vegetarian and not non-vegetarian. And why vegetarianism? So basically, uh, here is what I argue. One is, <coughs> excuse me, that you've led to uh, animal viruses, which I've explained the various animal viruses from uh, the mad cow disease, H5N1, uh, to uh, the current uh, pandemic. Uh, and also the 1918 pandemic, which uh, you know, was in part because of uh, consumption of chicken and pigs. And um, second is that the food system is responsible for up to 30% of uh, methane production, most of which originates in meat and dairy stock. Uh, the source is the Lancet. Um, and then lastly, that human beings are designed to be vegetarian. Now, this is an important slide, but I'm basically arguing that minus into plus is equal to minus, and the minus is non-vegetarian. So these are all the kinds of different kinds of viruses I've gone into, which is H1N1, uh, the Asian flu, Marburg, Hendra, Ebola, SARS, and then the plus is vegetarian. And then for 
uh, the final solution be plus, basically everyone has to be uh, vegetarian. So basically what I argue is that, uh, you know, just like different technologies move in S-curves, uh, there's a new S-curve of vegetarianism, uh, which will not lead to uh, any kind of pandemic. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I've talked about a design of life, uh, which is basically, uh, uh, you know, there's, a, there's human life and an animal life. And uh, uh, basically, man doesn't have the right uh, to kill an animal and eat it. Uh, and then basically I've argued why, uh, because there, there, there are pandemics, uh, there's the methane, uh, there's the methane issue, and then there's a, there's a morality issue. Um, uh, and then lastly, uh, the, the design of COVID-19. You know, there, in life there's a design to everything. There's a design uh, to life, there's a design to COVID-19. And basically what I'm arguing is that for the life cycle of the disease, from, go to, from going from B to C, you have to eliminate uh, uh, killing and eating animals. The animal food chain has to be disrupted permanently. Uh, from A to B uh, is you know, the shaded portion, which is because of the, finer, the Pfizer and the Moderna uh, vaccine. And then lastly, um, as I said, the design of COVID-19, uh, the issues are you know, social distancing, face masks, hygiene. There is a design to face masks. And that is that you have to be careful of what you kill and eat and don't kill and eat an animal and put it in your mouth. Thank you.